Hello everyone, welcome to Tech in Travel. Tesla Model 3 is one of the most efficient and aerodynamic EVs ever built. Yet, we all want more range out of it. In this video, we're going to look at 7 different tips to maximize the range and efficiency of Tesla Model 3. Let's get started. Number 1. Using chill mode and single pedal drive. Number 2. Speed. Number 3. Sentry mode. Number 4. Your aircon and heater settings. Number 5. Tire pressure. 6. Using aero wheels. And 7. The myth around phone charging. Now, I've done myself about, if I go into trips, I've done about 7,300 kilometers, which is equivalent of about uh, close to 4,500 miles. And the overall energy consumption is 132 watt hour per kilometer. That translates to about 380 kilometers of range. So that's the number that have, I have overall, and, and it is across different driving conditions. Most of it is, is in the city, a mixture of both expressways as well as uh, internal city driving. Uh, based on my experience, uh, in the best of conditions, when I'm on the expressway, uh, I get about 110 uh, watt per kilometer. And then when I'm in the city, in stop and go, yeah, it can go as high as 160 watt hour per kilometer or about 260 watt hour per mile. First, on the chill mode. If you go to the settings, as you can see here, if you go to pedals and steering, you have two modes here. One is chill, the other is standard. Essentially what chill does is to throttle um, or, or have a cap on how much power and torque you can uh, transfer to the wheels. Now equally, single pedal drive is extremely important. As you know, electric vehicles have regenerative braking and making use of the single pedal drive helps you essentially to charge back the batteries. To summarize, using gentle acceleration, enabling chill mode and using single pedal drive to make the magic of regenerative braking work can help you save 15 to 20 percent of consumption in city drive. Next, let's look at the impact of speed on the overall efficiency. As you can see from this graph, the consumption for Tesla Model 3 initially reduces at low speeds and then starts to increase beyond a certain point in time. From this graph, the ideal speed is less than 90 km per hour, perhaps close to 70 km per hour, uh, but I guess that would be too slow. So therefore, 90 km, keeping to under 90 km per hour, 55 miles per hour might give you the best returns. Now, just to highlight, increasing the speed from 90 km per hour 210 kmph would increase the consumption by 18 percent similarly increasing the speed from 90 to 130 kilometers per hour would increase the consumption by a whooping 40 percent and that's all aerodynamics coming into play driving at 150 kilometers per hour or about 90 miles an hour instead of the 90 kilometers and 55 miles per hour would increase the battery consumption by 68 percent next is the sentry mode sentry mode is essentially cameras all around your car so that just in case if you have an incident uh, you have a record of it now the sad thing is that it does consume a lot of power um, while for a few minutes it wouldn't hurt but if you leave your car on for an hour with the sentry mode, you're essentially consuming about 0.3 to 0.4% of battery. And then when you do the math, if, you, if the sentry mode is always on, uh, then in a day you would consume about 8% battery. So that's a lot of consumption, especially for a city drive. The way to get around that is that for sentry mode, you can exclude a few places. For example, you can exclude home, you can exclude work, you can exclude favorites. Um, and, and, and that way it wouldn't record when you are at those locations. Since sentry mode is such a big drain, I've personally turned off the sentry mode uh, and I use it only when I really need to. Next, let me move to the aircon settings. Now, firstly, look at these graphs here. As you can see, at low speeds, 
in between 15 and 25 and 35 kilometers per hour on average which is what you get in a city drive typically aircon consumption is a pretty big deal it can consume literally half the power now the interesting thing is that tesla's aircon is fairly efficient at one kilowatt on an average but when you start the car in heat that consumption can go all the way up to three to four kilowatts per hour and for a 50 kilowatt battery that does I say, take a hit what i suggest doing is two things one when you start the car open the window let the heat go out and then you let the uh, uh, the, the aircon do its work secondly try using the auto mode as you can see there's auto mode here i could run it on manual where i adjust the fan speed myself or i could run it on auto where the fan speed is adjusted automatically by the car next tire pressure so now um, as you can see in the controls of the car yeah if you go to the service side of things here you can see the tire pressure uh, try to maintain it at the recommended tire pressure which you can find on essentially the left door panel next is the aero wheels again another innovation from tesla where to make this car the most aerodynamic car in the world it wasn't sufficient to get the best possible shape tesla also had to innovate when it came, came to the wheel covers to summarize it is critical to maintain tire pressure at the recommended psi a 10 percent drop in pressure can make your range go off by two to three percentage points Similarly, using aero wheels is also important. It contributes to about increasing the range by 3%. The new Model 3 comes with two wireless chargers for your phone, as well as USB plug points for other accessories. Question is, does it really consume power? Now, a large sized iPhone 13 Pro has a battery of about 4,500 mAh. If you convert this into kilowatt, it's about 17 watt hour and only about 0.17 watt hour. What does this mean? If you were to charge your iPhone 13 Pro 30 times, you would only consume 1% of your 50 kilowatt hour battery. So to summarize, when it comes to charging phones and accessories, really, it doesn't matter. Your Tesla battery is so much larger in comparison that whether you charge or not, it really doesn't impact the range and the consumption in any meaningful way. So now let's look at how much range can we extend and how much battery can we save if we were to focus on the most important things. When it comes to city traffic, three things are most important. One, using chill mode and single pedal drive, essentially going gentle on acceleration that can make a big difference and extend range from anything to 15 to 25 percent next using sentry mode sparingly and as little as possible three getting the aircon and heater settings right as we have discussed these three things combined depending on how you use them could help to improve the efficiency by up to 50 percent when it comes to expressway and highway driving things are a bit different. The two most important things are one, using chill mode and single pedal drive, essentially accelerating gently as much as you can. And then most importantly, the speed at which you drive. As you've seen from the graphs, driving at 90 kilometers per hour or 55 miles an hour versus driving at 30 or at, let's say about 90 miles an hour has a huge difference when it comes to consumption. For more such unbiased reviews and for the latest on Tech in Travel, subscribe to our channel Tech in Travel.